Let's talk about how gold deposits in streams and why you might be overlooking some very obvious deposits. Because this is a complicated subject involving the word stratification, we're going to need some help. In the form of gel pens that I stole off an eight-year-old. And they're butcher's paper. Don't worry, I bought these for us, so technically this is just a tax. Thanks, Mika. Now to see if there's any blank pages in here. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to find one, but we've got an actual blank page here. Stratification just means when objects sort themselves out based off density. So not size, not weight, but density. Water sorts itself out based on temperature. Colder water is denser, so it sinks to the bottom. Warmer water is not as dense, and so it will come to the top. Same things happens with airflow, with thermal currents. But with soil, it's a little bit more tricky because what you're doing is you're sorting things out based on how dense they are over a much longer period of time. In fact, stratification is what makes gold pans and sluice boxes work in the first place. We're relying on the fact that gold is 19 times heavier than water. So once we start shaking these pans and the sluice box starts agitating the dirt, gold being likely one of the most dense things in the entire pan will sink to the very bottom. And that's how we can wash all the dirt off the top without having to worry about whether or not the gold's gonna get washed out with it. Being colorblind sucks, so we're gonna to stick to um, pretty neutral colors. This is a cross cut of a river channel. Because gold is 19 times heavier than water, most gold miners will go straight to bedrock. There will be a really rich pay layer with the most heavy and dense minerals sitting right on bedrock where it physically can't penetrate any further. These pay layers will subsequently be covered up in layers of soil that aren't as dense. So you would imagine, and it is taught, that the best possible payday you can have is going to be on the bedrock. But that's not actually true. Yes! This gold layer on the bedrock is going to be incredibly rich, and that's where you're most likely to find a high concentration of gold easily. The thing is, it takes a lot of time for gold to sink to the bottom of a river in any normal flow. Yes, floods, big major floods that are quite violent, that strip creeks and rivers down to their bedrock, or carve river channels deeper every single year, will speed that process up for the most part you're relying on very slow gradual erosion to put that gold into the creek. If you have an aphorous quartz vein, a quartz vein that's holding gold, it's going to take a long time for the weathering of the rock in the mountainside to shed that gold down into the creek. Well when it hits the creek it's going to start sorting itself out due to stratification, meaning the big chunky nuggets are going to be the first ones to sink because they're large, heavy and extremely dense. So you're going to find larger pieces of gold closer to the source. But the thing is, most quartz veins containing large amounts of gold don't necessarily have nuggets. A lot of the time, the gold that's locked up within those quartz veins is extremely fine. Meaning that while you might get a few nuggets and whatnot down the hillside and close to where it was discharging into the creek, it's going to take an extremely long time for that super fine gold to find its way down to the bedrock. Missing one thing here, and that's the normal soil layer, might be something like this. Meaning that when the gold hits the water, it's going to sink to that soil, and then it's going to rely on the flow of the river or the creek to slowly stratify the material by density and create layers. You will literally find very fine gold layers, slightly chunkier layers, and maybe even mixed layers as you get closer to the bottom. And once you get to the bottom, you'll find everything. You'll find small gold, large gold, and gold nuggets all mixed together. That's why a lot of people go out panning or high banking and they will dig down maybe half a foot or two feet until they hit a nice solid compacted stratified layer and they'll pull out some really nice gold. They might get a few nice flakes and a bunch of flower gold. They set their high bankers up and they go like hell and they dig and they dig and they dig but they punch through the layer. The layer might only be this big, it might only be this big, it might be just sitting on top of compacted gravel. And at the end of the day, you clean out your high bank and you don't have much more gold than what you had at the start. And that's only because you punch through that layer and the stratification has taken all the other gold much deeper. The only time this isn't true is when you don't have depth of soil. If this is like a meter deep, you're going to get multiple layers through that meter of soil. But if this gold vein is shedding down directly onto the bedrock or with very minimal topsoil, then you won't have this layering issue. 
And this is where your test painting comes in handy. You want to find where your gold is sitting. If you do find gold sitting in a layer, punch through that layer and see what's underneath it. See how deep and how thick that layer is. So you can make a choice of what machinery to bring out or whether or not it's just something that's just worth panning. And then you can track it. You can literally follow those layers to bigger deposits by systematically checking not only how rich the layer is, but checking how deep and how thick it is. Because the thicker that layer gets, the more stratification that has happened, and the more likely you're gonna be sitting on a really good gold deposit.